sees a clown as many things to many people. A mad scientist, a sociopath, a tongue enthusiast. However, to me, sees a clown is rather simply a subscriber to the Grand Line Review, who receives regular One Piece content uploaded straight into his YouTube feed. And knowing that, it really is difficult to despise this lavender clown. Not impossible, of course not impossible at all, actually, but certainly, you know, mildly more difficult. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and more specifically, Sagas in Minutes, the series that aims to equip you with the basic knowledge to leap into the wilderness of One Piece. And today, we are heading into the new world at last to examine the mammoth piece of story that is the Dress Rosa Saga. The Dress Rosa Saga is the eighth in the series, consisting of two arcs, but an absolutely mega 148 manga chapters, which makes it the longest saga that we have covered to date. And as such, I'm telling you right here and now, this is certainly not going to be finished within a single video. But to kick things off, we are finally here, as we pick up with the Straw Hats emerging into the new world, and immediately they are met with some of the most chaotic and apocalyptic weather conditions that we have ever faced in the series, signifying that this stretch of water is on a completely different level. From here, our new world log pose presents three possible destinations to the crew, of which Luffy chooses none of them because they also receive a distress call from a location known as Punk Hazard, and smelling a decent mystery, Luffy becomes determined to visit this island. The Straw Hats are not the only one to receive this signal, however, as this transmission is intercepted by now Vice Admiral Smoker and his G5 Marine forces, who were lying in wait for Luffy at the island that they suspected he was most likely to choose. But as a result, they also set sail for Punk Hazard. After arriving on the island, the crew splits into two groups, with the initial landing party being Luffy, Robin, Zoro, and Usopp, who traverse this fiery hellscape and almost immediately stumble upon a dragon, which is quickly defeated. In the meantime, the remaining Straw Hats aboard the Thousand Sunny are captured and imprisoned in a mysterious facility on the other half of Punk Hazard, which is also a hellscape, but a frozen one. And here we encounter two very very strange things. The first of which is a group of children who are being experimented on at the facility, and the second is a samurai, or part of a samurai, named Ginemon. And over the course of Punk Hazard, Ginemon's various separated body parts would be collected together to form one unit of solid samurai. Soon enough though, it becomes apparent that Ginemon was rendered in the state by one Trafalgar Law, a member of the worst generation, and who post time skip has now become a warlord of the sea, and who furthermore appears to be working with the cast of antagonists in control of Punk Hazard. And Law's presence on the island is first discovered by Smoker, and the two engage in combat which resulted in Law's victory via removing Smoker's heart with the incredible powers of his devil fruit. To make matters worse, Law is then able to switch the bodies of Smoker and Shigi, resulting in Shigi's consciousness being placed into Smoker's fleshy vessel and vice versa. Furthermore, Law also goes on to do this with the secondary group of Straw Hats, and Nami, Sanji, Frankie, and Chopper all undergo a hilarious body swap. And as for who becomes who in this situation, well, Nami was placed into the body of Frankie, resulting in one very pretty cyborg. Whereas Frankie went into the body of Chopper, resulting in the abomination that is this thing. Meanwhile, Chopper went to the body of Sanji, giving us one very adorable chef. And finally, Sanji was thrown into the body of Nami, which was something of a dream come true for him. Although he was threatened by the overwhelming newfound cyborg powers of Nami, not to do anything untoward with her body. Which to be fair, he really didn't, except for when he started smoking, which was kind of a dick move. At this point though, Luffy stumbles upon Law and remembers him being responsible for saving his life during the Marine for Dark. Not only providing Luffy with an escape vessel from the war, but also treating his wounds. And after some shenaniganry, eventually Law approaches Luffy with a bold proposition, claiming that he has a plan to take down one of the four emperors, and he even suggests that he and Luffy form an alliance to do so. And despite his present crew members warning against the danger of a pirate alliance, Luffy almost immediately accepts his proposition, and Law begins to implement his complicated plan, which begins right here on Punk Hazard. And he also gradually undoes all of the crazy body swapping he implemented within the crew. But step one of Law's master plan has to do with the ultimate antagonist of Punk Hazard, a man named Caesar Clown, who was responsible for experimenting on the children, as well as the production of various chemical weapons and producing a substance known as SAD, or SAD, which is then used to create artificial devil fruits by Caesar's benefactors, one of which is eventually revealed to be Warlord of the Sea, Don Quixote do Flamingo, who then uses this to do business with an Emperor of the Sea that the Luffy Law Alliance is targeting, who is later revealed to be Kaido. And in order to put a halt to this, an operation is implemented to capture Caesar Clown, which is easier said than done, because another presence arrives on the island in the form of Vice Admiral Virgo, who is a double agent within the Marines and an extreme physical powerhouse. And just on power, it should be noted that Caesar Clown isn't exactly a weak existence himself, as he had consumed a Logia devil type fruit known as the Gasu Gasu no Mi, which allows him to conjure, manipulate, and become gas. Which means that he can do all sorts of crazy crap, such as remove all of the oxygen from the air around him, which went on to instantly defeat a whole host of our good guys. Furthermore, at this stage, a faction of the Straw Hats get captured by Caesar Clown, along with Law, Smoker, and Toshigi. And at this point, they form a temporary alliance with Smoker and the G5 Marines, after which Law restores their bodies, and all of a sudden we have quite the miniature army here, marching in full force on Punk Hazard. Meanwhile, Caesar is currently in the process of broadcasting 
broadcasting his brand new chemical weapon, which threatens to kill everybody on the island, putting a great sense of urgency into this pirate marine alliance. And Caesar's weapon would comprise a complex set of operations, whereby he infused some of his own poisonous gas and a Zoan type devil fruit to create what I would call a big old blob of death, which was named Smiley. However, this was but the tame form of Caesar's weapon, as basically after consuming a tasty candy designed for Smiley that would go on to kill the creature, then that would reveal the true form of the weapon, which was the widespread release of the gas on mass. Interestingly enough though, this also provided us with the very first example of what happens to a devil fruit after its user passes away, which is that the power immediately reincarnates into the nearest appropriate fruit for future use. A very interesting stuff right there. Now very notably at this point, there are also quite a few parties watching this broadcast who are representatives from power all over the world. And we do recognize certain figures such as Pecoms and Tomago from the Big Mom Pirates, but also Eustace Kid from the worst generation. But many of these figures were entirely unknown characters and have been referred to as the underground brokers. As part of the ensuing skirmish, Trafalgar Law and Smoker team up to take on Vice Admiral Virgo in an incredibly hard fought battle. However, the duo eventually overcome him and Virgo is left in a state of separation thanks to Law's abilities. As this is going on, Luffy is gunning towards Caesar to defeat and capture him. Although along the way, he discovers a child by the name of Momonosuke who appears to have eaten an artificial devil fruit not created by Caesar though. Instead, it was crafted by the legendary Dr. Vegapunk and it has the effect of turning Momonosuke into a small Eastern dragon. Although the young boy is not capable of controlling his abilities very well at this point in the story. The most important thing about Momonosuke though, is that he is a comrade of the puzzle samurai Kinemon, a duo whose mystery on Punk Hazard would be unraveled over the course of many, many arcs. In any case, Luffy does eventually find and defeat Caesar, with the other allied forces proving victorious in their individual endeavors as well. One other notable conflict is that Zoro and Tashigi teamed up to defeat Monet, the user of a snow type low gear fruit. Chaos on Punk Hazard has certainly not gone unnoticed though, and Doflamingo is well aware of the trouble that his business is currently facing, choosing first of all to send two members of the Don Quixote Pirates, being Buffalo and Baby Five, to ensure order on the island. Although after their failure, as well as with the sudden breaking contact with Monet, who in a very complicated manner was accidentally killed by Caesar, Doflamingo decides to make his way to the island himself. After the victory of the allied forces though, a short break slash no party occurs, in which Law reveals the next stage of his plan, which is to visit Green Bit, an island territory connected to that of Dressrosa, the island that Doflamingo currently rules as a king. And after discovering that Law and the Straw Hats are headed to Dressrosa, Kinemon expresses his desire to visit the island as well, because he has mysterious business there. And so Kinemon and Momonosuke join the fun and the Alliance sails away from Punk Hazard with Caesar Clown in chains. This leaves Smoker and the G5 Marines on the island who are shortly after confronted by the arrival of Doflamingo, who attempts to kill Smoker, but is ultimately stopped by the very well-timed arrival of another figure being former Marine Admiral Aokiji, who now is just known by his real name, Kuzan. In any case, not wanting to face off against Kuzan, Doflamingo smugly retreats back to his kingdom while Kuzan and Smoker then have a little chat. Now at this point, it should be stated that Kuzan has resigned from the Marines after battling Sakazuki for the position of Fleet Admiral. A 10 day affair that actually took place on Punk Hazard and is the reason why the entire island's climate has been irrevocably morphed into a half fire, half ice Pokeball style island. And so at the moment, Kuzan is acting as more of a rogue agent of justice. Although there are allegedly some terrible rumors surrounding his actions and current associates. More delicious, delicious mystery, but Kuzan still retains an incredible degree of trust in Smoker and even requests that Smoker does not report his presence to the Marines at large. And now on route to dress Rosa with the leverage of Caesar Clown, Law calls Doflamingo and issues him with an ultimatum in that he will hand Caesar over in exchange for Doflamingo resigning his position as a warlord of the sea, which Doflamingo does agree to, and a hostage exchange is arranged on the territory of Green Bit. This opportunity is also taken to introduce us to the current makeup of the seven warlords of the sea, which does include some familiar faces being Dracul Mihawk, Boa Hancock, Bartholomew Kuma, and Doflamingo, of course. And in addition to this, there are two new warlords mentioned, being Trafalgar Law and Buggy the Clown, who was invited to the organization after his actions during Marineford. But there is one seventh final member who we are keeping a mystery for now, so, so many mysteries happening here. But furthermore, elsewhere in the world, it is announced that not only have Luffy and Law formed an alliance, but another cohort of the worst generation have done the exact same, being used to Skid, Scratch Manipu, and Basil Hawkins. And I guess by default, you can also include Massacre Soldier Killer in this alliance because he is a direct subordinate of Kid. And this alliance was also created with the intention of bringing down one of the four emperors, although that emperor is unknown at this point in the story. But despite the seemingly amicable agreement between Doflamingo and Law, both parties are planning all sorts of fun betrayal as Law charges a section of the Straw Hats with finding and destroying the Smile Factory on Dressrosa whilst he exchanges he's a clown on Green Bit. And in the meantime, Doflamingo also has roughly a billion tricks up his sleeve, including invoking his influence on the world government to have a brand new Marine Admiral sent to the island in order to assist him. And in addition to that, Doflamingo also has a plan to lure Luffy into a trap as he has organized a tournament in the Corridor Coliseum with the ultimate prize being the Mera Mera no Mi, a devil fruit once owned by Luffy's now past 
brother, Podcast DAs. And with that, the stage is now set for one of the most complex and chaotic events to ever take place in the series, as the crew land on the island of love, passion, and toys, Dress Rosa. Next time on Sagas in Minutes, we are tackling the second part of this incredibly long saga and leaping straight into conflict with the heavenly demon Doflamingo with the second part of the Dress Rosa Saga. But what do you guys think about the Dress Rosa Saga so far? Please do leave your thoughts in the comment section below or even join my Discord server. And if you're keen for more One Piece content, then please do check out my other videos and even subscribe to the channel for regular One Piece amazingness delivered straight to your YouTube feed. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.